What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through the 2021 AP Calculus AB and BC free response question number one. So let's get started. So for this density question here, the first thing we want to do is approximate f prime of 2.25. And to do this, we have to use the idea that the derivative tells you the slope of a function at a particular point. So we have to get very, very close to 2.25. And 2.25 is between 2 and 2.5. Two and so we're going to use these two points from the table to approximate the value of the derivative. So that's going to be f of 2.5 minus f of 2 divided by 2.5 minus 2. And if we pay attention to the units here, for f of r, the units are milligrams per square centimeter. So we could write milligrams over centimeters to the second power, but then this is going to be over the units for the row on top here for r is centimeters. So once again, when they give you a table of values, the units are always written in there. So then just write it across the top and bottom as you're doing the subtraction and division. So that tells us then that f prime of 2.25 is roughly equal to, and we're just going to take the values from the table. We have 10 minus 6 over a half, and I could leave the units like this, or I could just call this milligrams per cubic centimeter, or milligrams per centimeters to the third power. And then from here, to simplify, I could leave it like this, but that always bothers me to leave it like that. 4 divided by a half is 8. So f prime of 2.25 is roughly equal to 8 milligrams per cubic centimeter. But now, the last thing we have to do is explain what this means in the context of the problem. So these questions can be very tricky when you have to explain. But just think about what it means, what we just found. That in general, if f prime of 2.25 is approximately 8, which is positive, that means that f is increasing at r equals 2.25. So that's just in general. Anytime you have a derivative that's positive, that means your function is increasing at that value. So now you just have to fill in the blanks here and think about, well, what does this function actually stand for? So they told us that f of r is representing the density of the bacteria population where r is the centimeters from the center of the dish. So this tells us then that the density of the bacteria is increasing when we are 2.25 centimeters away from the center. For part B, we're doing a right Riemann sum, and we're trying to approximate this integral here. 2 pi integral from 0 to 4, and we have r f of r dr. So the approximation here, 2 pi is constant, so we could leave this on the outside. But what makes this approximation a little bit tricky is this r f of r dr piece on the inside. So for density integrals, once again, that r f of r piece is a little bit tricky to deal with. So one thing we could consider right away is that since we have four subintervals, that means we're going to have four delta r's to look at. So our first delta r is going from 0 to 1, and that's a distance of 1, or that's a change of 1, so that's our first delta r. And then our next delta r, we'll call delta r sub 2, is the change from 1 to 2, which is an increase of 1. And then delta r sub 3, we're going from 2 to 2.5, so that's a change of 0.5. And then delta r sub 4 is the change from 2.5 to 4, and that's just going to be 1.5. So that's going to come in handy when we actually have to find this Riemann sum. But since we're doing a right Riemann sum, that means we're going to be using the four values all the way to the right here for our function values. So the sneaky piece to consider, though, is that we're not just doing f of r. We have to also attach the radius at that location. So when r is equal to 1, the density is 2 milligrams per square centimeter. So we're going to do 1 times f of 1 is equal to 2. But don't forget to tack on dr, or delta r1 the first time is equal to 1. If you forget the first two, you'll be OK. But then the last two will actually change the actual value of the approximation, and you'll get it wrong. So just once again, make sure that you calculate all the delta r's. So now we have plus. The next radius we're going to use is 2. f of 2 the density when we're two centimeters away from the center is six. So we have two times six times, and our next delta r is equal to one. So now we go to the next radius would be 2.5.
times, and the function value of 2.5 is 10, and then we're just gonna multiply by delta r, which is 0 0.5 here. And then for the last entry here, we have a r value of four times f of four is 18. And then we're multiplying this by the last delta r, which was 1.5. So then from here, we're just going to type all of this in. Oh, and notice we're calculating the total mass in milligrams. So if we want to just tack on at the end, just say this is all in milligrams. So the approximation then we could say, the approximation, so we're just saying here, roughly equal to, and we're just going to type this whole expression into a calculator. So let's just type everything in here. We have 2 pi, and now we're just typing in everything from before. So we have 1 times 2 times 1 is 2, plus we have 1 times 2 times 6 is 12, Plus, and then here we have 2.5. Now, look, you could do all the mental math you want, but if you have a calculator, there's no shame here in just typing this stuff in. And then here we have plus 4 times 18 times 1.5. So we just close parentheses and close it around the whole jumbo parentheses. And this is going to be our approximation for the mass in the Petri dish. So the final answer here, we're going to have 845. 0 0.088 milligrams. Remember, always round to three decimal places, but this is our approximation to part B. For part C, we're trying to see if our approximation from part B is an over or underestimate of the total mass of the bacteria. So what you need to think about here is just think about what it looks like when you have an increasing function. So you could either draw this out or just think of this in your head, that when you have a function that's going up, if you do a right Riemann sum, so let's say I take this space here, so from here to here. If I take that space from there to there, and I use a right Riemann sum to approximate the area under the curve, so we'll change colors. Notice, if I'm making my rectangles using points from the right, all the rectangles are going to be going up because all the points to the right are always greater than the points before it if you have an increasing function. So that's how I know that we have an over-approximation here, is I just draw it out. And then that's going to help us craft our response. Now, the only thing we have to be very careful with here when we actually explain this is we have to say that because f of r is an increasing function, so we have here, we have the function f is increasing and differentiable, we have to specifically mention that r f of r is an increasing function. So once we mention here that r f of r is increasing on this interval, then we can draw our conclusion here that the right Riemann sum is an overestimate of the total mass of bacteria. So once again, when you are writing out explanations or preparing for the AP test, it's very helpful to be able to draw, thing, th draw things out like this and think about it because otherwise you have to memorize a whole lot of theory for the test. So for the last part of this question, part D, what we're actually given here is now we have an actual function for the density of bacteria and we're trying to find a value k between 1 and 4 where g of k is equal to the average value of g of r on the interval from 1 to 4. So what I like to do for questions like this is just translate this. I'm going to set g of k equal to the average value of g of r on the interval from 1 to 4 is 1 over 4 minus 1. We have the integral from 1 to 4 of g of r dr. So we really just have to show up knowing our formulas. But really all we're going to be doing here is all calculator work. We're going to use the calculator to solve for a value of k between 1 and 4. That is equal to, once again, to make g of k equal to this value here. So we're answering this last part with all technology here. So the best thing we could do is just type the function in first. So we have 2 minus 16, and then we throw on our parentheses. We have cosine, and then in the parentheses here, we're going to have 1.57. And then we have the square root of r, but we could just write this as the square root of x. And then one thing to be mindful of here is that once we get out of this, we have to close the parentheses around the cosine function. Uh, or the inside of the cosine function, then we have to close it around the outside and raise all of that to the third power. So just typing this in correctly sometimes could be a little annoying. But now if we go back to the main screen, once again, the, one of the things we're trying to find here is the average value of the function. So we have one third, we press math nine to pull up an integral, and we have the integral from one to four 
of, and we already typed this one, so the shortcut, we could press vars, right arrow, function, and then y1. That way I don't have to keep retyping this over and over. And then we press enter here, and notice we get this decimal value. Now, that's a lot to retype, so I'm just going to store this. I'm going to store this as the letter A. And now, if I go back to the y equals, what I want to do is I'm going to graph that value because the idea is I want to see when is, when is the function g of r equal to the average function value. So we're going to set g of r equal to the average function value by just looking for the intersection point. Now, if you just graph this thing normally here, there's a lot of stuff going on. Notice they gave us a subinterval to look at. They said when k is between 1 and 4. So we're going to go here from 1 to four, and now because our answer, our average value was between, uh, well, it was between nine and ten. I'm just going to make this graph a little bit taller so you could see this more clearly here. So notice the point of intersection. We're going to press second trace number five, and this is going to tell us when we trace this intersection point. We press enter before, we scroll a little bit after, and we press enter a second time, and this is going to give us the value of k that will tell us when the function is equal to the average rate of change. So we just record our value here. We're going to have k is equal to 2.497. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the AP Calculus 2021 A, B, and B, C free response question number one. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.